Shano Varuna. That is, may the lords of oceans be auspicious unto us. This is the motto of the Indian Navy, and the Navy Day in India is celebrated on 4th of December every year. Now, what is the reason because of which 4th of December was chosen? So, this was because of the success of Operation Trident in the year 1971. Now, what is this Operation Trident? And what led to that operation? What happened in the year 1971? So, let's start. In the year 1971, the port of Karachi housed the headquarters of the Pakistan Navy and almost its entire fleet was based in Karachi Harbour. Since Karachi was also the hub of Pakistan's maritime trade and was a very important port for Pakistan and a blockade would be disastrous for Pakistan's economy. So the security of Karachi Harbour was predominant to the Pakistani High Command and it was heavily defended against any air or naval strikes. Even the port's airspace was secured by the strike aircraft based at airfields in the area. So in the year 1971, the things were not going well between India and Pakistan and after Pakistan declared a national emergency on 23rd of November, the Indian Navy deployed three Vidyut class missile boats in the vicinity of Oka. Now where is Oka? So it's in Gujarat and near Karachi and this was used to carry out patrols. Now as the Pakistani fleet would also be operating in the same waters, the Indian Navy set a demarcation line which ships in their fleet would not cross. Later, this deployment proved to be useful for gaining experience in the region's water. Now on 3rd of December, after Pakistan attacked Indian airfield along the border, the Indo-Pakistan War of 1971 officially began, also known as Mukti Bahini or Bangladesh War of Liberation. Now after that, the Indian Navy headquarters in Delhi, along with the Western Naval Command, planned to attack the port of Karachi. A strike ground under Western Naval Command was formed for this mission. This strike group was to be based around the three Vidyut class missile boats already deployed off the coast of Okha. However, these boats had limited operational and radar range, and to overcome this difficulty, it was decided to assign support vessels to the group. Now, the D Day. On 4th of December, what was now designated as the Karachi Strike Group was formed and consisted of the three Vidyut class missile boats. These were INS Nipath, that is Indian naval ship, INS Nirghat, and INS Veer, each armed with four Soviet made SSN 2B strike surface to surface missiles with a range of around 40 nautical miles, that is around 74 kilometers. In addition to this, two Arnala class anti submarine corvettes. These were INS Kilton and INS Kutchal, and a fleet tanker named INS Poshak. Now, the group was under the command of Commander Babru Bhan Yadav, the commanding officer of the 25th Missile Board Squadron. Now, as planned, on 4th of December, the strike group reached 250 nautical miles, that is around 460 kilometers south of the coast of Karachi and maintained its position during the day outside the surveillance range of Pakistan Air Force as Pakistani aircraft did not possess night bombing capabilities. It was planned that the attack would take place between dusk and dawn. So at 10.30 pm PKT that is Pakistan Standard Time, the Indian task group moved around 180 nautical miles that is around 330 kilometers from its position towards the south of Karachi. Soon, Pakistani targets identified as warships were detected around 70 nautical miles that is 130 kilometers to the northwest and northeast of the Indian warships. Now, INS Nirghat drove forward in a northwesterly direction and fired its strikes missile at PNS Khyber. So this was a Pakistani battle class destroyer, PNS Khyber. Now Khyber, assuming it was a missile from Indian aircraft, 
engaged its anti-aircraft systems. The missile hit the right side of the ship, exploding below the galley in the electrician's mess desk at 10.45 pkd. This led to an explosion in the first boiler room. Subsequently, the ship lost propulsion and was flooded with smoke. And an emergency signal that read, Enemy aircraft attacked in position. 020FF20, number 1 boiler hit. Ship stopped. Was sent to Pakistan Naval Headquarters. After this, due to the chaos created by the explosion, the signal contained the wrong coordinates of the ship's position. This delayed rescue teams from reaching its location, observing that the ship was still afloat. Nirghat fired its second missile, hitting Heber, in the second boiler room on the ship's starboard side, eventually sinking the ship, and this led to the killing of 222 sailors. After verifying two targets in the area, northwest of Karachi at 11 pm PKT, INS Nepal fired two strikes missiles, one each at cargo vessel MV Venus Challenger and its escort PNS, like its Pakistan naval ship Shah Jahan. So, this was a C class destroyer. Then, Venus Challenger, carrying ammunition for the Pakistan forces, exploded immediately after the missile hit and eventually sank 23 nautical miles, that is around 43 kilometers south of Karachi. The other missile targeted Shah Jahan and damaged the ship very badly. After that, at 11.20 pm, PNS Mohafiz, so this was an adjutant class minesweeper, was targeted by INS Veer. A missile was fired and Mohafiz was struck on the left side behind the bridge. It sank immediately before it could send a signal to the Pakistan naval headquarters that led to the killing of 33 sailors. Meanwhile, INS Nepal continued towards Karachi and targeted the Kemari oil storage tanks, placing itself 14 nautical miles south of Karachi harbor. Two missiles were launched, one misfired, but the other hit the oil tanks, which burned and were destroyed completely, causing a Pakistani fuel shortage. The task force returned to the nearest Indian port. Soon, the Pakistan naval headquarters deployed rescue teams on patrol vessels to recover the survivors of Khyber. As Muhafiz sank before it could transmit a distress call, the Pakistanis only learned of its fate from its few survivors who were recovered when a patrol vessel steered towards the ship's burning flood sam. After that, the Pakistan Air Force retaliated for these attacks by bombing Kukha boat in the western side of India scoring direct hits on fueling facilities for missile boats and ammunition dump and the missiles boats JT. The Indian Navy anticipated this attack and had already moved the missile boats to other locations to prevent any losses. However, the destruction of a spatial fuel tank prevented and further incursions until Operation Python executed three days later. Now what was this Operation Python? So this was a follow-up to Operation Trident and this was the code name of a naval attack launched on West Pakistan's port city of Karachi by the Indian Navy during Indo-Pakistan War of 1971. Now after the first attack during Operation Trident on the port of Karachi, Pakistan stepped up aerial surveillance of its coast as the presence of large Indian Navy ships gave the impression that another attack was being planned. Pakistani warships attempted to outsmart the Indian Navy by mingling with merchant shipping. To counter these moves, Operation Python was launched on the night of 8th and 9th December 1971. A strike group consisting of one missile boat and two frigates attacked the group of ships off the coast of Karachi. While India suffered no losses, Pakistani fleet tanker PNS Dhaka was damaged beyond repair and the Kemari oil storage facility was lost. Two other foreign ships stationed in Karachi were also sunk during the attack. 
talking about operation python on the night of 8th and 9th december 1971 at 10 pm pkt that is pakistan standard time in rough seas a small strike group consisting of the missile boat anas binash equipped with four strike missiles and two multi purpose frigates that was anas talwar and anas trishul approached manora a peninsula south of the port of karachi during their voyage a pakistani patrol vessel was encountered and sunk the indian navy's official historian vice admiral hiranandani in his book transition to triumph mentioned that while the group approached karachi trishul's electronic surveillance revealed that the radar there had stopped rotating and was directed straight at the group confirming that it had been detected around 11 pm pkd the group detected a batch of ships at a distance of around 12 nautical miles vinash immediately fired all four of its missiles the first of which struck the fuel tanks at the kemari oil farm causing a heavy explosion another missile hit and sank the panamanian fuel tanker ss gulf star the third and fourth missile hit the pakistani navy fleet tanker pns dhaka and the british merchant vessel ss hamilton dhaka was damaged beyond repair while hamilton sank as vinash had now expelled all of its missiles the group immediately withdrew to the nearest indian port between operation trident and python and the indian air force attacks on karachi's fuel and ammunition depots more than 50% of total fuel requirement of the karachi zone was reported to have been destroyed the result was a crippling economic blow to pakistan the damage was estimated to be worth around 3 billion dollars with most of the oil reserves and ammunition warehouses and workshops destroyed the pakistan air force was also affected by the loss of fuel now even after the operation trident all of the pakistan armed forces were put on high alert the deployments were raised a number of false alarms in the ensuing days about the presence of indian navy vessels off karachi and one such false alarm was raised by a pakistan navy fokker friendship reconnaissance aircraft on 6th of december 1971 before operation python which incorrectly reported a frigate of the pakistan navy as an indian navy missile boat the pakistan navy headquarters requested a pakistan air force air strike on the supposed indian ship and at 6:45 am pkt fighter jets were scrambled and struck the vessel before it was identified as the frigate pns zulfiqa and this incident resulted in casualties and damage to the vessel with no casualties on indian side this operation was considered to be one of the most successful in modern navy history post world war 2 to mark this victory the indian navy annually celebrates navy day on 4th of december later many were honored with gallantry awards for the operation then fleet operations officer captain gulab mohan lal hiranandani was awarded the nau sena medal for detailed operation planning then the mahavir chakra was awarded to the strike group commander commander babu bahan yadav for planning and leading the task force and veer chakras were awarded to lieutenant commanders bahadur nariman kabina indrajit sharma m o thomachan and om prakash mehta the commanding officers of ans nepal ans nirgal and ans v respectively in addition to this master chief m n sangal of ans nirgal was also awarded the v chakra now there are several other operations as well of the indian navy that includes operation cactus operation talwar operation parakram and several other operations we'll talk about all of these operations in detail in some other video and indian navy basically has three commands western command in mumbai eastern command in vizag or visakhapatnam and southern command in kochi moreover there are various ships in the indian navy that includes aircraft carrier amphibious vessels destroyers 
corvettes, frigates, submarines, and lastly, without which this video will be incomplete. A special forces unit of the Indian Navy. You must have heard about it, Marcos. That is the Marine Commandos. So this special forces unit was raised by the Indian Navy in 1987, basically for counter-terrorism operations. And their motto is the few, the fearless. So that's it. Do like, share, and subscribe to the channel. And we will meet soon with more such videos. Thank you.